The question in the title of this video isn't as silly as you might think. These are all shapes that, in some vague intuitive sense, have holes. But can you prove that they have holes mathematically rigorously? This question is one that French mathematician Poincaré set out to answer in his now famous 1985 paper, Analysis Cetus. And it's one that modern textbooks and topology devote pages of sophisticated math to answer. In this video, we're going to answer this question by studying a field of math called algebraic topology. This field of math is, roughly, the intersection of topology and group theory. We'll specifically focus on a device called the fundamental group, which allows us to precisely detect when a space has holes. We'll begin with a very basic idea. Suppose you have a space with no holes, and you take a loop on that space. You can always contract that loop to a point, because it has no holes. But if your space does have a hole, you can't contract this loop to a point, because it'll get caught on the hole. We'll use this as a test to find holes. So if every loop in your space can be contracted to a point, we'll say that the space has no holes. But if there's a loop that cannot be contracted to a point, we'll say that the space has a hole. Let's make this precise. Whatever space you have, let's call it X. By a loop in your space X, we mean a continuous map C from the circle to our space X. Now we need to explain what it means to deform one loop to another. Well, this is given by a continuous map of a cylinder into our space. As the circle moves across the cylinder, the loop deforms from one loop to another. We say that the first loop here and the last loop here are homotopic to one another. As a special case, it may happen that a loop is contracted to a point. Then we say that the original loop is homotopic to a point. Now we can make our earlier intuition precise. If in our space X, every loop is homotopic to a point, the space should have no holes. But if there's a loop which is not homotopic to a point, the space should have a hole. We'll now divide loops into packets according to whether they're homotopic to each other or not. So all the loops in the same box are considered homotopic to one another. For example, on the torus, all the loops of the same color are homotopic to each other. If two loops have different colors, they aren't homotopic to each other. We're now going to discuss what it means to multiply two loops. If this loop is called A, and this loop is called B, then the loop A times B is obtained by first traveling along A, and then traveling along B. This multiplication of loops has many of the same properties as usual multiplication. It's associative. For any loops C1, C2, and C3, it satisfies this rule. There's an identity element, which we'll call 1. This is the constant loop. If you take any loop C and multiply it with 1, you get back C. Finally, every loop C has an inverse, denoted C inverse. Any set with an operation that has these three properties is called a group. So the set of all loops in our space X is a group. It's called the fundamental group of X denoted pi 1 of x. Okay, so this is technically not right, because we're not looking at all loops in the space separately, but we're looking at packets of loops. That is, all the red loops are viewed as the same loop, all the green loops are viewed as the same loop, and so on. So really, we're looking at the set of all packets of loops in x. So each element of the fundamental group pi 1 of x is a packet of loops. So this is all fine and good, but we should ask, does any of this actually work? If you look at a concrete space with holes, can you actually calculate its fundamental group? The simplest space for which we can compute the fundamental group is the xy plane. Well, any loop in this space can be deformed into a point. So all loops in this space belong to the same packet. The fundamental group of this space therefore has one element. This means intuitively that the space has no holes. But what if you take the plane and remove a point? This black loop is homotopic to a point, but this red loop cannot be deformed into a point. What if you go around the hole in the opposite direction? It turns out that this is not homotopic to the red loop. What about going around two times? It turns out that this is not homotopic to any of the other loops drawn. Let's label this loop as 1 because it goes around once. Let's label this loop minus 1 because it goes around once in the opposite direction. Let's call this loop 2 and this loop 0. If you multiply the one loop by the two loop, you're going around three times in total, so you get the three loop. 
When you multiply two loops, it's the same as adding the corresponding integers. Therefore, pi1 of the plane minus a point is z, the set of all integers. The fact that the fundamental group is non-trivial means intuitively that the space has a hole in it. Now you might argue that we haven't done anything interesting, because, I mean, it's obvious that the plane doesn't have a hole, and it's obvious that the plane minus a point has a hole. Can the fundamental group give us information that isn't already intuitively obvious? The answer is yes. Consider the set of all rotations in 3D space. If you have a plate, each 3D configuration of the plate represents a 3D rotation. The set of all such 3D rotations forms a space called SO3. We can represent a loop as an arm holding a plate. Imagine a copy of the plate at every point on the arm. The plate here represents the starting point of the loop, and the plate here represents the ending point. This is the constant loop, because the plate is in the same position at every point in the arm. Another example of a loop would be if my arm is twisted 360 degrees. As we travel across my arm, the plate is rotating. But the start and end position are the same. This is a non-constant loop in SO3. These two loops are not homotopic. There's no way to transition from this loop to this loop while keeping the endpoints fixed. But if you rotate this book again to get a total of a 720 degree rotation, you arrive at the constant loop once more. What that means is, calling this loop A, if you travel along A twice, you arrive at the identity. Said differently, if you run through this loop once, you get caught on a hole. But if you run through the loop twice, the hole disappears. So pi1 is just a group with two elements. This trick is sometimes called Dirac's plate trick. The physicist Dirac was fond of using this model to explain the phenomenon that electrons have spin one half. To finish off this video, I'd like to list some resources to learn more about the subject. A great place to learn algebraic topology are these video lectures by Pierre Albin. The first half is a very good introduction to the fundamental group, and the rest of it covers some more advanced topics. The link is in the description. If you prefer written materials, Alan Hatcher from Cornell has written a book, Algebraic Topology. The first few chapters are all about the fundamental group. The next chapters are about homology and cohomology, which are two more advanced topics in algebraic topology. The link is in the description. Hey, thanks for watching this video. I'm a big believer that when doing math, it's important to do lots and lots of practice problems. That's exactly what you can do with Brilliant, who is the sponsor of today's video. With Brilliant, learning math is fun and interactive. There are thousands of lessons from the basics to advanced topics, and new lessons that are added every month. I especially love their course on probability and data visualization. It has plenty of exercises that use actual data. This is useful so that you get not only a theoretical understanding, but also hands-on practice with crunching numbers. And there are lots of interactive visuals as well. This gives experience with understanding data visualization, which is useful in fields that use probability and statistics heavily, like, say, machine learning. They have loads of other courses as well in math, physics, and computer science. Whatever your skill level, Brilliant customizes content to fit your needs and lets you work at your own pace. To try everything Brilliant has to offer, free for a full 30 days, visit brilliant.org slash aleph0 or click on the link in the description. The first 200 people to sign up will receive 20% off of Brilliant's annual premium subscription. Thanks to Brilliant for sponsoring this video, and thank you for watching. I'll see you next time. Bye.